Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video we are going to learn about PHP ecosystem inside uh, Lambda function. So every server is different and so is Lambda. Um, the function is running in a very delicate environment which we are going to learn soon. So yes, we have created our test function, but what next? Like uh, how can we include the files um, and how can we access the files is the idea of this video. So if I run the function, uh, I can, I'm getting the hello world back because the function is telling me to do so. Um, one thing we can do is we can look around a little bit on the server to understand the server where we have been deployed. So let's do something like that. Let's list out the root folder of the Lambda server. So we can uh, we can see that we have been deployed to a Linux server that has the pretty common file system. Uh, one difference between the Lambda and your average, you know, Linux server is that Lambda server is read only. So there is no way to write directly the files and file changes to the root or actually any other folder. Uh, it's fully read only. So that's the biggest difference, I would say. But um, yeah, luckily there's a workaround uh, for that problem. So we can look now what's, what those are. Uh, so first of all, the environment files, uh, the files that you can see on the left hand side, they are placed to the folder var and task. So if I run the test function, I should be able to see, yeah, source. So I am I'm able to see and access the files on the environment. So if I create a new file here, let's say, uh, and I deploy the hello PHP, I should be able to see it. So that's one way to write the files and uh, like include libraries and things you need um, to the system. You need to do it manually and the biggest thing that this is local. So the change you do here is not reflected on the, any other function uh, inside the Lambda. So this is purely local files that you can access. Um, you can store the you know, configurations here, or if you access to MySQL, you can uh, save the credentials or there's any, like, there's many ways how you can, how you can uh, um, take advantage of this environment uh, folder. Let me delete it. Um, now, if you look at the layers, uh, the layers are deployed to a folder called opt. So any changes you do here, every uh, layer you commit and update will reflect the opt folder. So these two layers, the runtime and vendor, uh, as we have seen in our previous video, uh, they consist these files and folders. So if I create another uh, layer, let's say I call it AWS PHP include, um, let's do it quickly. Includes and I create a new, let's do a text file. Um, let's do include PHP. Uh, let me open with any plus. Okay, so let's create something basic. Let's create the class helper and let's create the function hello. Whoops. Function return uh, 
Okay, so I have created my first class and the function inside. So how can you include that class? Uh, it's pretty simple. So first of all, let me send it to a zip file. Now let me open the layer. Let's call it AWS PHP includes. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. F uh, additional resources, layers, create layer. Uh, it was AWS PHP. What was it? Uh, includes. So I have included my file, custom runtime, and I will upload it. So I will copy the REN and we can go back to function and include the layer. So now when I run the command, I can see the includes folder here because I added the additional uh, layer and it has the includes folder inside. Um, now keep in mind, uh, if you create another zip file that has the includes folder and let's say it has the file um, uh, config, uh, yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, if it has another file and you put it to the another layer, uh, it will be merged together. So you can see those two files uh, in the file system. If you include one or the another in the zip file. So the system nicely merges everything together and I can use the files um, in that uh, in that order, I have add, added the layers uh, under the function. Keep in mind that uh, all the layers are dedicated to the function. They are not, um, how, do you, uh, how do you say, um, in, in one function, you add the layers and another one you need to add to the same ones to get the same included files to the function. Um, and now if I want to include this, file it's quite easy again let me include the class whoops require once and let me turn to this uh, that include file includes and what was it helper php was it um let me check quickly Mm, nope includes include PHP okay and it had a class helper so includes include PHP helper equals new helper and let's print it out to see if we have gained the access to the class so I deploy. Let's hope everything works now. So yeah, we, uh, the helper is now object. And let me try this helper. And what was the function inside? Hello. I believe it was a hello. And let's test this one as well. Mm. Something seems to be off. Let me see. Uh, I need to check again the function, but uh, basically you get the idea. Um, you get the idea. Function hello. Uh, should be working. Yeah, so yeah. I got it with the return. So I'm returning the result I'm getting from helper class hello function or method. Um, so another thing you can do, uh, you can access to the uh, PHP uh, environment 
uh, variable. So for example, I can print out the environment. And if I run it, I can see a bunch of variables from the environment. So you can investigate that. Uh, there, there is like a Lambda runtime directory and uh, some other other variables you may need uh, as you as you work with uh, Lambda. And there is one more. You can also access the server var variable that consists another patch of variables you may need. Uh, then you can also do the PHP info where you can see the variables that are, um, let's say the modules that are added to the PHP. So yeah, you, uh, pretty much you can work around uh, with the PHP um, in that way. Uh, so in this video, I explained how you can use the environment uh, files and folders, how you can use the layers and uh, how to put it all together. So keep in mind that Lambda function uh, uh, server that, that is uh, uh, running the Lambda functions is read-only. And uh, so if you need to store any variables, there is no direct way. You need to do it either through the MySQL connection or you do it uh, by submitting the layer which I will include in another video. So thank you for watching, subscribe and like and see you soon.